Okay, so this is part two. This is just immediately continuing where the camera cut off just a second ago. Searching for my karmic guide. Didn't see her in the stack. Oh, there she is. Alright, so now I'm in business. So, I shove up the rest of my deck. Oh, I'd be so sweet if I drew Patriarch's bidding. Okay, so to summarize, what's going on is I've been testing the draws um, with Kerador. I only have five spirits in play. I have a soul ring or shards. I have two, four, six, eight, nine lands. I have chromatic lantern. I have a survival of the fittest, burgeoning, and land tax. That's all in play. I have no spirits in play that are really <laughs> impressive. And I have just thrown away an Ami death aspect to survival of the fittest. So what I did is I got all the spirits out of my deck. Currently I'm still revolving survival. <clears throat> so all these, everybody's going in the graveyard. I've put one on my hand. So to make it cheap, hmm, let's just pick somebody that is cheap to cast. How about Kami of False Hope? So that's the one I'll put in my hand. So that's basically my white Spore Frog. All these go in the graveyard. And I did this at the end of the opponent who precedes me turn. So now it will be my turn. I will untap. Draw. All right, so I've just drawn Cabal Coffers. I have Urborg out. So I've got the Cabal Coffers Urborg combo. I have nothing that needs so much black. Very little to, to actually do. I will tap the lantern for one white to play Call Me a False Hope, my white Spore Frog. I will use Carador's ability. So the reason I did it at the end of my preceding opponent's turn, at the end, um, so nobody can bajuka bog me and get rid of it, that would be depressing, that would not be, not be nice. So I am going to get the Karma Guide. So I'll cast her. One, two. Uh, three, four. Five. Go ahead and tap the Marine Bosque. Because I still have white here. Everything's black because of Urborg. And I still have three green, so I'm okay in my colors. I'll play Karma Guide. And she is going to bring back probably Spirit of the Hearth is the best bet. <clears throat> so nobody will exile my graveyard because I cannot be targeted. So I'll bring back Spirit of the Hearth with the Karma Guide. <coughs> Excuse me. So I now have a more impressive board state. I could attack. Two spirits came into play, so I drain one player for two. I will destroy two artifacts or enchantments with aura shards. And also, whenever I play spirit spell, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. So I have two plus one plus one counters to install. Let's say I give it to Kerador. I did not bring any counters down with me because I forgot about that. So Kerador will now be a 5-6. And I'll probably just attack with him. So Kerador comes at somebody. 5-6. Most likely get blocked. He's a 5-6 on the ground. It's not really impressive. 
and it's the commander, so people have an extra incentive to block him. So, Carador in this simulation does not get through. I untap. Upkeep, I'm going to again simulate the land tax is just sitting there. Um, I don't have more lands than anybody else at this point of the game. Which is <laughs> which is probably it, it depends on who I'm playing against. Uh, Peter's Goblin deck, I would definitely have more lands than he does. Um, Elish Norn, maybe not. Rook Thar, my friend Steven's Rook Thar deck. Maybe I would have more than he does, maybe not. It's, it's pretty swingy sometimes. Murray's Wake. Okay, this really doesn't... Uh... And I forgot the Echo. So, automatically, since I forgot the Echo, I by default did not pay it. So she's going to the graveyard, which is what I was going to do anyway, but... Not really being a, a clean play, player here, making a lot of mistakes. Let's get this out here. So two, three, four, five. So all my creatures get plus one, plus one from Murray's Wake. All my lands produce double mana. Not as nice as, say, getting something that would actually draw me cards, but it is what it is. Now let's, let's sort that out. One, two, three. And I need, so I'll tap there for white, take a point of damage. White, green. Oh, no. <laughs> I have Mari's Wake out. What an idiot I am. So, that was for the wake. This is two white, two black, two green. I still have one green floating in my mana pool. Well, that's nice how that works out. So let's bring back Karmic Guide. She comes into play. I destroy something. I put plus one plus encounter and target creature I control. I will give it to Kirador. So now he is a 6 7. And I want to get something interesting. Why not? Why not indeed? This is, after all, just seeing how this goes. Checking the deck. So, tap that. I still have one green. Tap that for three black, two white. So that's five minus three. I still have two mana in my mana pool. Tap Cabal Coffers. So four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have eleven men on my mana pool. Twelve because I get an additional one because of Murray's Wake. Thirteen, fourteen. I will leave mana up for Yavamaya Hollow just in case. And I will activate Mirror Ent Entity. All creatures that control become fourteen, fourteen, and gain all creature types until end of turn. So I will not attack with the Call Me False Hope. I cannot attack with Mirror Entity or Karmic Guide. <laughs> I ran on the table, you can't see those cards now. This is uh this is great. So <laughs> Kirator has three plus and plus encounters on him. So he's a 17. 14. 14 flooring, 14, 14, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 times 14, 50, 70, so that's 70 points of damage, 87 with Kirador, so I'm going to say I killed somebody, bang, done, dead, alright, so this is slow. In some games, I would have already been dead because it took so long to to come out. But that's the the nature of this deck. Uh, one of the things I like about this deck is it's resilient. It can do some really powerful things, as you just saw. But 
because of the slowness, because of uh, how long it takes to get going, uh, being tribal spirits, being mostly Kamigawa, it's not overall a very powerful deck. So if I'm playing against somebody and they want to play a lower power game, Kerador, the way I've built it, is usually a pretty safe, a safe deck to go to. Not always. Sometimes it really works. You know, just the nature of the game. Sometimes it works even worse than it did now. But overall, I'd say this is a five, six on the power scale. If you agree, disagree, let me know. Uh, post something in the comments below. Let's start a discussion. What do you think the power level of Carador is? All right, so that's the end of uh, this video.